Yeah, all good stuff. Now, Harvey was hypercritical of your uh, performances. He called you lax, pedestrian, and he said you lacked attitude. Do you think he's got a point at all? No, I think it's full of shit. Yes, pure crap. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's meet the man who's caused all this trouble. <laughs> Mr Harvey Goldsmith. <laughs> We had a bit of a battle of wills with Saxon, the mighty Saxon. How was it? Yeah, it was a good battle. Enjoyed it, actually. When you first walked in, when you saw them on stage at that festival, what did you think of them? I thought they played very well, but to me, they did look a bit pedestrian. The so first do you, show do you we think did, that he's qualified? No, I must say, just let me say this. The first show we did that he says wasn't a great festival, right? Rubbish. On that bill, on that particular day, and you lot and Harvey might not know these bands, first band on was Sodom, second band was Within Temptation, third mm. band was Saxon, fourth band was Blind Guardian, top band was Megadeth. I mean, that is a serious bill. I've never ever faulted the fact of your value in Europe, and particularly in Germany, because I've always known, you know, since I first looked into what you do, that your strength is in those territories. Yeah. My concern is about the UK. Why weren't they bigger in the UK? Uh, why weren't they up there with the other bands that had, had organically grown and become so huge in the UK? What had happened to well, Saxon? We do. play venues in England, OK, and some of them we do well, some of them we do OK. We do... I don't know, <clears throat> we sell out the Astoria, mm -hmm. we sell out the Wolverhampton Civic. We do the, we do the, the gigs that everybody else does. Right? No, you don't. Yeah, we do. No, you don't. In our genre, we do it, in our thing. No. You could do a hell of a lot better. We could, yeah, definitely. What have you done to make it better then? They could do a hell of a lot better. What have you done in Britain, in the UK and England, to make it better so they should sell out With those this venues? band? Yeah. I think I've done a lot. Um, I'm an agent in the business, and in the late 70s, early 80s, I was managing a band called UFO, and I was very involved at that time with what was going on with heavy metal in this country, and Harvey and I have known each other for a very long time. I'm really, really disappointed with the comments of the fans in this room, especially you with the long hair in the middle, because the truth is that this band haven't done any business, they haven't sold any records, they don't really mean enough in this country. Harvey comes in and ignites them and gets it started, talks to the press, gets radio involved, gets a lot of people talking about this, and you sit there and say, what have you done? What have you done? This is in the What have you done? I bought the tickets. I've been the in two with The only guy who's done anything in the last six months is Harvey fucking Goldsmith. Very well. Sean Llewellyn from uh, Classic Rock magazine. Would you put them on the front of your magazine now? Wouldn't put them on the front, no. Would you have done before? Probably in the very, very early days of Classic Rock uh, magazine. What would it possibly? take for them to get on the front cover of Classic Rock magazine? They need a massive, massive album, selling album. They need right. a massive well, sellout tour. That's where Jerry Ewing comes in. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Jerry, you're a DJ. Are you playing? Uh, I've certainly played Saxon, played some stuff from the new album. What do you make of it? I think it's very good. I think it's the sort of album they needed to make to certainly get them back to sort of approaching a level where people are going to take them a lot more seriously than they have done for the previous decade. And do you think that you playing their records is going to make a whole new generation of fans go out and buy their records? At the end of the day, the more that they can get on as many radio stations as possible, then the better it's going to be for them. Right. And, well, I'm sure and Ian Campfield's got a, something to say about that. You're on XFM. Uh-huh. I've been playing them. Uh, this was actually the first time I had Biff in for an interview on the show because there is a renewed level of interest in the band, and that is because of this TV show and, and the things that have come about as a result of it. And what's the feedback been like? The feedback's really good. Saxon are doing what they've always done. There was a new sound which was down to the production I think what on, did you on, make on of that, that production personally I, I didn't like that I thought you know that was a step too far but you know it was Harvey's job to try and get them to cross over into a completely new market he's raised the profile he tried something there that I personally don't think worked but getting them on this show getting them an hour on channel 4 this on E4 they wouldn't have had that without him and and that that automatically brings them to a whole new audience so it's only been good then absolutely it's Excellent. been good for him it's been good for them there is one plan that Harvey had which I think you said it was the worst day of your life, almost. Yes. Believe me, I've had worse Wednesday. moments than that. I think it was the worst day of my it. life, let alone yours. Yeah. Come on, let's make history! It was the 
worst three minutes I've ever fucking spent in my life. <laughs> Apart from making love. Well, Biff, you know, you took it pretty well in the show, Biff. Well, well listen, what I, did you really I, think of I it? Thought, I thought the way we played it was a, was a bit of fun. And yeah. uh, I think all the images that were shown of that, we were just laughing and having fun. And I, I, don't, think I, I don't think I could have done a damn thing in front of 28,000 fans who were pissed off that their team were le yeah. losing. Yeah. You know, I, I thought we did pretty well, actually. Uh, in their defence, mm. OK, and I'm going to have a go at the manager over this, because if that had been me, if this was my band, I would have made sure, one, that single was blaring over the tannoy before the game started, so people knew what the hell was going on. And secondly of all, what the guy failed to do was when he made the introduction, he completely ignored the Sunderland fans. He only talked to the Sheffield fans because he's from Sheffield. That was oh, all in the briefing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was in the briefing with the guy, yeah? Have you, have, have you ever been to a football game? They Good don't point. give a flying fuck <laughs> if their team is losing. Hey, yeah. I've been, I've, I've seen, I've seen in Germany top chart pop singers going down like shit on football games. Yeah. It's a high risk and we had no chance to do it. Yeah. And basically it's Do you regret doing idea. it though? Do you regret doing it? No. No. No, no, no we don't. I'll tell you why we no. don't regret doing it. It was a stunt. Just Let's get this clear. It's a fucking publicity stunt to try and get the people to come see us at Sheffield to get rid of and I actually did tons of radio interviews because of that stupid stunt. And let's face it, we were the first bat people ever to do an air guitar record. So we got the fucking record anyway. <laughs> We'd have got the record with three people air guitar and it was a complete setup. So but let's get that completely straight. Not only that, when I came idea? back for the, for the show, the week later, the taxi driver overheard me say the word Saxon, and he said, are they here yet? He said, "He said I wasn't there, but those are the guys who went for that mad record exactly. last week. He said, everybody in the town's talking about it. Yeah. So One stunt that did go well, and you've all got to admit this, and I was pretty impressed with this, was the gig where Harvey made up the fact that The Cure were playing to get loads of kids along, and you ended up rocking it. Let's take a look at that. Are we Saxon, yeah? We're going to play some British metal tonight, OK? <laughs> That must have been a major, you know, you've been in the business for how many years, but that must have been a major, major buzz, getting all those kids jumping again. Yeah, it was definitely. Well, it, We didn't know what to expect. It, it's what we do, that's our job. The thing is, the music, the music's ageless. It's just the people that play it get older. So, it's Harvey, was that, was that a flute? Sorry to interrupt you, Bed Biff. Uh, was that a flute, Harvey, or do you think they could do that again and again and again? Uh, for me, that was the acid test, because if they could play blind to an audience where a large majority of them had A, certainly didn't know that Saxon were playing, and B, had never seen or heard them, and they'd won them over, then I knew I was on a roll that I could really make this work. OK, well, if I've learnt one thing already, it's that show business is about business. So we sent out James Max, that posh bloke from The Apprentice, to assess the market for metal. Here's the Max report. In the early 80s, the mighty Saxon were hailed as a new wave of British heavy metal. With three top 10 albums and four top 20 singles, the Barnsley Barnstormers were flying as high as an eagle. To date, Saxon have racked up album sales of a quarter of a million alone in the UK. It's not bad for a band from Yorkshire. But what about their contemporaries, Iron Maiden? They've managed to sell an awesome 70 million albums worldwide, and they've managed to stay mainstream. Their latest album, released in 2006, reached number one in 10 countries and number four in the UK. So what went wrong for Saxon? It's all about investment by record companies in promoting acts. 
since the 80s, the heavy metal market has fragmented. Thrash metal, death metal, hair metal, power metal, black metal, and countless other subclasses have split the fan base. And more recently, American new metal bands with ridiculous names like Porn, Limp Biscuit, and Linkin Park have combined metal with indie rock and rap to appeal to younger fans, stealing the thunder of the old school metalers. But there is hope. There's still a massive audience for heavy metal outside of the UK. In the last 15 years, Saxon have had three albums in the German Top 15 chart, with their 2001 release, Killing Grounds, reaching number 26. The key for Saxon is to make it as big as they are in Germany across Europe, which contains five out of the ten top countries in terms of global value. And the rewards for breaking through are huge. Remember Nordi, the Finnish monster rockers, who surprised everyone by winning the Eurovision Song Contest last year. Nordi's album became triple platinum in Finland and reached the top 40 charts across Europe. Nordi proves there's a massive audience for metal. It's all about getting your message out there. Loud and clear. So what James is basically saying, I think, is that Saxon, legendary rock band, need to enter Eurovision. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. The thing is that Eurovision showed that a genre of music that wouldn't normally be either popular or successful, suddenly, as a result of that, became very popular across Europe. So it's all about a combination of, yes, being true to your roots, yes, having talent, yes, everything else, but you've got to package yourself, you've got to market yourself, and then, with all due respect to the core audience here, your fans, Saxon, have to get out there and get other fans. Coming up, we'll be talking to the choir boys about how they got their act together, and we'll find out what this lot think of Harvey's advice. Yeah.